probably been more big muskies caught on a believer over the course of time than any other bait. Right now we're trying to imitate some of the uh, bait fish that you might see out in our water and uh, some popular colors that we like to use. Uh, silver and black, can never go wrong with that. We have a lot of gas bro or alewife in our waters. As you can see, it's got a couple battle scars. And uh, I like to paint my lures. I painted this one. Uh, sometimes I just like to take a lure that, that I like. It might not be a color of my choice, but uh, I'll paint it up with something that that we think might work in our water. And that's what we're using out there too. We got a couple lures that uh, I've painted and it's it's a big accomplishment. I like, I, like, uh, I like it when we catch a fish on a lure that I've painted because uh, it just makes you feel good, you know, knowing that a fish wanted to eat something that you just made. And this year I'm wear, like, I'm gonna paint them more about like, what color I should paint it, not what I want. Yeah. Like I keep painting colors that I like, like it's like a fashion show, but it's not, <laughs> so. My first few baits, the paint jobs were horrid on, and I know that. <laughs> Just like every builder starting out. That's uh, Frank Thurston from Thirsty Lures. Frank, uh, he's got a real interesting story in that he was, sick and tired of trying to pay the big bucks for, for custom crankbaits or even just regular muscular. It's expensive. You get these custom crankbaits, some of them are like a couple hundred bucks each, whatever. A lot of the premium and the nicer crank customs, I just couldn't afford. And I started thinking, going, well, I have a woodworking experience. And I thought, I can, I can do this, or I can try at least. So Frank started making his own to use them. And then all of a sudden, he's catching fish with them. Now I've evolved to trying to put premium baits into the average musky fisherman's hands. Now Frank is selling his baits too at Thirsty Lures, so uh, if you're looking for a custom bait at a decent price, that guy could probably hook you up and he, he knows what he's doing. What makes a great bait usually is, is if it's erratic. You want your baits to always come back to true, but if you have a bait that will go true and then kick off left, or kick off right and come back. Those are the golden ones. Muskie are also ambush and they're also stalkers. Well, they'll follow right behind the bait. And if the bait's just doing that constant, 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 and all of a sudden does a kick off, muskies a lot of times have this instinctual attack when they think that their prey is taking off. I'm not trying to tune each one to run like an assembly line. If there's erraticness, I leave it. Um, I love doing it. I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it bit for, you know, getting the pictures of somebody going, I caught my personal best on yours. Whether it's a 47, whether it's a 54, you know, everybody's personal best is different. And getting those is what I thrive on. That's what makes it worthwhile for me. Before I met Marlin, I never fished. And my first fish I ever caught was a muskie. And it was a 42, so that was pretty awesome. And then you kind of said, oh, do you want to fish for bass one day? <laughs> What'd you say? Well, I said, how big are they? And you're like, I was like, no. You're like, what's the point? I was like, what's the point? I want so the big one. Infected with the, the musky disease, as they say. <laughs>